Hey guys, welcome to the video and today I'm going to be showing you the rarest, most unique ship parts in Starfield. For example, parts you can only get from a specific place, parts you'll only see if you've leveled up a certain amount and things like that. First up, two unique parts you can only get at one point in the game. These are the Com Spike and the Conduction Grid. The Conduction Grid reduces EM damage by 50% and increases shield regeneration by 25%, while the Com Spike makes the time to lock onto enemy ships reduced by 25% and weapons cost 20% less to use in targeting mode. Two very useful things to have, but the only time you can get both of these unique pieces of equipment are on the final mission of the Crimson Fleet storyline. After starting the Eye of the Storm mission, Delgado asks you to acquire the Conduction Grid and the Com Spike. To do that, you have to talk to Jasmine Durand at the service room in the Key. This gives you the items free of charge, but it's the only time in the game you can get it, and that time lasts until the Crimson Fleet are gone. When the Crimson Fleet are gone, you cannot buy additional comm spikes or conduction grids, so they won't be available from other vendors, and you can't even duplicate them in ship builders as you can with other items. So if you do want to make sure you have the comm spike or conduction grid available throughout the game, make sure to add them to all of your ships during that mission. Also, there is one cheeky way you can duplicate these items using a glitch. If you have these items attached to a weapon mount such as the Novatech weapon mount and you do a duplicate on that weapon mount, not the items themselves, it will duplicate the weapon mount along with everything attached to it. Now these items do not stack so the only reason you would want to do this and duplicate these items is just for aesthetic purposes, just to make your ship look a bit more symmetrical. But it is good to know you can still cover your ship in comm spikes and conduction grids if you really wanted. Next up, did you know there's a unique hab you cannot buy anywhere else? In fact, you actually already have this. It's the two by one hab on your starter ship. You might not think it's anything special, but there is precisely one of these in the game. So once it's gone, you can't get it back. If you have deleted it, however, don't worry because there is another hab that looks very similar, and this is the 2x1 Nova Galactic Frontier Hab. While similar though, there are a few visual differences, so it's not exactly the same, which just makes the original Frontier 2x1 Hab all the more special. Next up, the Hemeji Command Bridge. Now the reason most players won't have seen this bridge is that it has two unlock requirements. The first is that you've reached level 33, and if you're a new player, that's going to take you some time to get there. The second is that you reach Starship Design at rank 3. The third of four total ranks. And if you've not started to specialise in Starship Design, there would really be no reason for you to have ranked up to Starship Design at 3. The Hemeji Command Bridge has a base value of 23,655 credits and two crew stations. This puts it among the smaller bridges in the game, but if you wanted an alternative to the massive bridges that Starfield has, this is a great option, with much less overall mass. So this puts it sort of in the middle ground between huge bridges and big cockpits. Next up, the Poseidon DT230 engines. This engine is the best in the entire game, with the highest engine thrust and the highest maneuvering thrust. But you won't find these engines at a vendor until you've done two things. The first is that you've unlocked Starship Design Rank 4, the final rank of the skill. The second is that your character has reached level 58. This will demand dozens of hours of playtime because leveling in this game is very slow and you might have thought ship parts stop unlocking after a certain point as well, but no, go back to a vendor after reaching level 58 and you'll find the Poseidon DT230 engines waiting to be bought. And the amount of credits you will need for these engines is 40,280. Okay, unique structural pieces now and these are cheap to buy but open up a world of possibilities when it comes to building creative starship designs. The first is the Nova Cross Passage, and the one place you can buy this in the whole game is New Homestead on Titan. The Nova Cross Passage gives you a horizontal structure, structural piece sorry, that lets you build sideways so you can join together two side-by-side -side hubs without them physically needing to connect. The second unique structural piece is the Hopetech Hub Cross Brace, which can be bought on Hopetown on Pole this is in the Valo system, and it's a lot like the Nova Cross Passage, but it's smaller, and you can build on top of it 
and below it. And it opens up loads of unorthodox ship designs, making it a key component in loads of imaginative ship designs that you will see. The Nova Bracer is arguably the most versatile structural piece of the lot, however, as you can build out from it in six different directions, up and down, side to side, and front to back. You can get the Nova Bracer on the key Gagarin Landing, Paradiso, and New Homestead. On to unique hab pieces now, and these are hab pieces with a difference. Usually habs function as rooms on your ship, the habitative spaces in other words, but these hab pieces function more as building materials. So a lot like structural pieces that I just mentioned, but you will find these in the hab category. It's the Hope Tech Hab Spine, and this piece lets you build not only side to side, but front to back as well. So you can snap this down and build out around it in different directions. A really useful piece and one you can only get from the Hope Tech ship manufacturer, which is in Hope Town on the planet Polvo in the Valo system. Okay, on to unique specialized equipments. This stuff only exists in one place, and not only that, but it unlocks a unique function that no other equipment has in the game. You might have encountered this stuff already if you're into smuggling contraband. It is well known by now, but there they are the scanned jammers. And what these do is help you get past system scans undetected. There are three types of scan jammer. The single frequency scan jammer increases your chance of evasion by 10%. The dual frequency one increases your chance of evasion by 30%. And the multi frequency one increases your evasion chance by 50%. So you have a 50% chance of evading a scan with the multi frequency scan jammer. You can buy all three types of scan jammer from Lon Anderson at Red Mile. This is on the planet Parima 3 in the Parima system. And it really is just wild to me how Starfield ship design has an entire category called equipment and there's only one type of thing in it, the scan jammer. Hopefully the devs give us more equipment in this category in the future. Seems a bit of a waste just to have one type of equipment in there. Give me more, maybe like bubble heads or something. Another item unique to the Red Mile is the 10ST hauler shielded cargo hold. But even if you go there, you might not have seen this because you have to also be level 32 to unlock it. Now the 10ST hauler shielded cargo hold is basically a cargo hold hold that hides anything you put in it from scanners, so you won't need a scan jammer. It holds the most space out of all shielded cargo holds, making it the best of its type in the game. We are talking reactors now, and the best reactor in the whole game is the Pinch 8Z reactor. It provides a massive 40 power to your ship, and you can buy this from any vendor, but the thing is, before you'll see it in their shop, you'll need to do three things. The first is to be level 60, the second is to have Starship Design rank 4, and the third is to have piloting rank 4. So three very time consuming requirements are needed before you get the best reactor in the game, the Pinch 8Z reactor. Okay, landing bay wise, most landing bays are available across all vendors, but there's one you can only get in Neon and in the Red Mile. So just two places to get this, and it's the Shipbed 200 landing bay. And very nice, it is too. Switching from landing bays to landing gears now, this is available in one place, New Homestead on Titan. It also requires you to be level 14 and have Starship Design Rank 2. It's called the NG20 Landing Gear Y, and it's the most powerful landing gear in the game. It's got four mass, four thrust, and four hull, perfectly balanced in every way. So if you've built a particularly heavy ship with loads of parts, bolt on a few of these landing gears, and you will have enough thrust to get off the ground. The Marduk 1040A Shield Generator is a rare shield generator with a few requirements before you can get it. You'll need to be level 46 before you start seeing this in shops and also have a Starship Design at rank 4. Added to that, it still won't be actually available across all vendors. You can only get the Marduk 1040A shield generator from the ship technicians on Cydonia on Mars, Gagarin Landing on Gagarin, the Deimos Styard in Deimos, and New Homestead on Titan. So just four specific places. It's got 760 max health, which for comparison is about half as much as the best shield generator in the 
the game, but it's also much cheaper. And also it's a class A, so at least you don't have to have a class C ship to get it. You can put this on any ship you want. And onto the weapons. The Vanguard Hellfire Auto Cannons have the highest firing rate out of any ship weapon in the game. So with six of these things, you will be dealing the most amount of damage per second possible. These weapons, however, only show up once you progressed far enough through the UC Vanguard faction's quest line. So they are locked behind quest progress. The quest in particular you have to complete for these to show up is called Grunt Work. Fortunately, it is pretty early on in the quest line. It's literally the second mission. To start the UC Vanguard quest line, go to the UC Vanguard MAST in New Atlantis and speak to Commander Tuala. He's behind a desk to the left of the main entrance. Do the second mission and you can unlock these very, very fast firing auto cannons. Two more weapons with unique unlock requirements are firstly the Tatsu 501 EM suppressor. This can be bought from most ship technicians but only once you've hit level 60, have a class C ship and starship design rank 4. The same goes for the Obliterator 250 MEV Alpha turret. So once again, reach level 60 and have a class C ship and have starship design rank 4. But these two weapons absolutely shred enemies so you can see why there's a big requirement for them. Anyway, those were all the unique, rare and hardest to obtain ship parts in Starfield. If you enjoyed the video, do be sure to subscribe to the channel to get the latest Starfield guides.